Hey, OCAM students, Ben Asman here. If you want to be skinny, if you want to find the next diet pill that might actually work, you might want to pay attention to today's lab. We're doing the Horner Emmons reaction. The Horner Emmons reaction. This is our second named reaction in a row. It's based off the Nobel Prize winning work of Gerald Wittig and his much more famous and aptly named Wittig reaction. This was all back in a time when naming something after yourself didn't make you look like a jackass. Well, I promised you skinniness. Well, here is leukotriene. It's a natural product which was synthesized using the Wittig reaction, and it's an important step of the degradation of fatty acids. If you want to create the first skinny pill that actually works, you probably should know how fats degrade. But that's something for another video. When we talk about the Wittig or the horner emmons reaction, we say they act on carbonyls, specifically ketones or aldehydes. They're acted on by a phosphate group with a double bonded carbon that will be transferred over, as well as a number of ligands. The difference between horner emmons and Wittig is just those ligands. Our final product is an alkene, centered at the form of carbonyl. Well, actually, two alkenes, the equivalent of cis and trans to each other. The actual mechanism for this reaction is quite complex, so I'm going to explain it pretty much in full. First things up is we may make the phosphate reaction. We start off with this phosphate reagent, which is 90% of the way there. All it's missing is a reactive double bond. So we expose it to a base, in this case sodium hydroxide, pull off the hydrogen from the carbon. No, that one hydrogen isn't really bigger than all the other ones. But it should be. It should be. Some electrons shuffle around, and this gives us that double bond we're looking for. Well, and a very wonky water. Once we have the horner emmons reagent, we can go ahead and bring back the carbonyl. The phosphate oxygen will close down. The alkene on the phosphate will attack the carbonyl carbon, opening up the carbonyl which then will attack the phosphate group. This gives us a super strained four-membered ring which will open back up to give our final product alkene. Sister trans is just determined by the orientation of the starting material. Now this is a biphasic reaction. This is to say we have an aqueous and an organic phase. We use TBAB to shuttle our chemicals across between those two phases. This works because TBAB is ionic but still has four large nonpolar groups. So it's soluble in both aqueous and organic. When you set up your apparatus, here's a few good things to remember. The top should remain open, water should flow in through the bottom and out through the top, and you should clamp down at the round bottom. Here's the actual reaction we're doing today. You need to figure out what the product will be. Today we're using two reagents that require syringes. Benzaldehyde and diethyl benzyl phosphate. Okay? Both of them one mil syringes. In these cases, you'll notice color coding from yellow to yellow, blue to blue. When you want to take from this, you just want to take the point one or the point two as appropriate very little that you're actually going to be using. One, two, three, everything goes in. Benzylaldehyde, phosphate reagent, hexane, 50% aqueous sodium hydroxide. The only modification is don't even bother measuring out the tea bag. Just dip the back of your pipette inside the powder and shake it off. That will be plenty. Turn on your water, turn on your heat, get the reaction stirring, let it cook for an hour. By the time it gets to 100 degrees, you should see some reflux probably along the junction point between the reflux condenser and the round bottom. When it's done cooking, you can go ahead, pull it off, put it into an ice bath to chill out, or just let it stand until it's cool enough to handle. Add in the ether, stir to combine, add this to the separatory funnel, rinse out the round bottom with a little bit more water, add that to the separatory funnel. The first part of our isolation and purification step is an extraction. In it, we're going to have an aqueous phase and an organic phase. Organic phase being made up of our main organic solvent, in this case ether, and our aqueous phase made up of, of course, water. Your job is to figure out which one's on the top, which one's on the bottom. To do so, you're going to compare the densities of the two solvents, the water and the ether in this case. The denser one will sink, and the less dense will float. What you need to be able to figure out is where's the ether. Is it at the top phase, or is it the bottom phase? And your byproducts and waste goes into the aqueous, at least most of them. Now, I got this nice, clear extraction, but I cheated. Ultimately, this reaction almost always gives an emulsion. Basically, you create a white chemically mayonnaise inside your separatory funnel. To get rid of this, add a little bit more water, a little bit more ether, shake again. Still doesn't work, a little bit more water, a little bit more ether, shake again, and so on and so forth. When you have your nice clear solution, remove the aqueous phase, add more water, shake again, remove the aqueous phase, add more water, shake again. This to get out any remaining byproducts that could be in your extraction. Now it's time to dry your solution. Go ahead, grab the magnesium sulfate, add just enough so you soak up any remaining water at the bottom of your flask, Give it a few minutes before you actually go ahead and decant it. When you're ready to decant it, go ahead and grab yourself a short stemmed funnel and a little piece of cotton. Stick the cotton in the funnel and use it as a filter for your drying agent. You should still decant your solution so you don't clog the filter and end up standing there for the rest of your life. Make sure your Elemeyer flask is pre-weighed. Now this is a great place to stop if you're running low on time. Otherwise, grab yourself 
one boiling chip and evaporate off yourself. Once again, your only indication that it's done is that it stops boiling. So keep an eye on that temperature and keep it in the reasonable range. After that, pull it out, let it crystallize, leave it open in your drawer to evaporate. You're done for today.